So I got a comment yesterday asking me how I would handle dynamically querying different fields in GraphQL. Now this struck me as kind of interesting. And I haven't thought about that topic in quite a bit. Now I remember reading an article about it a little while ago and I found it and it's about why you should be using static GraphQL queries and why you should not, uh, or at least you should avoid generating dynamic queries uh, in GraphQL or dynamically selecting fields. And there's five things they go through in this tutorial, uh, or at least this article, I mean, that's very good. So I recommend looking at this if you wanna see why you should not create dynamic fields. And what I mean by dynamically creating a query is I think something like this is where you kind of have a function that would generate a query or something that generates the uh, string for you that's the GraphQL query. So it could be something like this. For example, this function takes a, uh, a single Boolean value, include average, and then in my query here, I'm deciding whether to include the average field. And you'll see I'm just using a string template here. I'm saying if include average is true, we're gonna include the average. Otherwise, we're gonna do an empty string not including the average. So this is what we do not want to do or it's not recommended and we lose some things when we do this and that's talked about in this article. So I was thinking about what is the best way to handle some of these cases because this is kind of a valid use case though at least from uh, as far as what it does by not actually querying the average or maybe you have some fields which you may want to uh, grab but sometimes you don't want to grab. And the first thing that came to mind was just splitting this up into multiple queries, right? Maybe you have one query that grabs the average and one query that doesn't get the average. The problem with that, though, is you may have n different queries you have to create. Like, you may have tons of different variables. This is a very simple example where I have a single variable that, or single field that I want to include or not include. But you may have, for example, 10 different uh, ones. So are you going to create 10 different queries? And as you can see, it doesn't scale very well. So eventually the, the how I would do it hit me and that'd be using a directive that I really haven't talked about a lot and haven't used myself a lot, which is the skip directive in GraphQL. And I didn't even realize this, but this is a default directive that I guess all GraphQL implementations have, or at least the graph, the JavaScript one has, I guess. Um, and so I made a little example of what it looked like to actually use this because I think the solution to dynamically grabbing fields can be solved by using the skip directive. So here is an example of what that might look like. So here is a Pokemon query, and this is me hitting the GraphQL Pokemon API. And my query looks like this. So I'm taking a single variable in the GraphQL query here. I'm calling it skip name, and it's a Boolean value. And here I'm selecting a Pokemon. In this case, I'm just hard coding Pikachu here. And then I'm deciding whether I should include the name field. Now obviously, very simple example, field is not gonna be super computational. Whether we include it or not, it's a big deal. But name could be a very large field in your application, right? So skipping this could be a big deal. So what we can do is we can add this at skip decorator, and then we can say if, and then if this variable is true, it will not include this field. Uh, and you saw there's another one we can use, uh, at include, which is the inverse of skip. So here I'm using the Apollo hooks library and I'm using use query on this right here. And then I'm just passing whether we should skip the name or not. And you can see it's rendered over here. Here's the name, here's my little Pokemon. And I have a little button that toggles whether I'm passing true or false to this variable. So if I toggle it, you'll notice we are no longer fetching the name. Otherwise we are fetching the name. Um, so there you go. I think that's pretty much how you should handle dynamic queries, or at least if you need to dynamically grab different fields, I think you're going to want to use the skip or the include directive. Now, I haven't really come across a case where I've needed to dynamically grab fields, so I'm not sure if this covers all the cases, uh, but I think this should do pretty good for that sort of thing. Uh, and again, this code is on Code Sandbox. I'll link it below if you want to come look at this example. It is using React Apollo hooks. And it also is using suspense, if we go to the bottom here. Um, suspense, and I just set the fallback to null here. And so what that means is if I refresh the page and it, it's going to load the Pikachu, while the data is loading, it's going to render null. You'll notice I didn't have to handle the loading state here, uh, which I think is pretty neat. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.